Assalamu alaikum everybody, this is your brother Sam and your favourite YouTuber in the world and a very warm welcome back to another video of me here at Sam of Somalia um, So in this video, I've, I've spoke, spoken a little bit before like I did a little video on my Instagram recently of me just teaching you guys some signs in British Sign Language um, but from like a Muslim perspective, so I had to say things like Assalamu alaikum or you could say Assalamu alaikum and you know, how are you and Alhamdulillah and MashaAllah and things like that in, in British Sign Language but um, I wrote a blog, uh, the blog's on my LinkedIn, go and check it out on my LinkedIn and uh, leave a comment over, over there as well. If you give the blog a like over there, I really like that, I really appreciate that too, inshallah. Um, yeah, and I thought I'd write a little article, which I'll just talk about in this video, about some reflections that I've kind of learned from, from the deaf community. Um, you know, things that really, like us in, you know, the hearing community, um, us outside the deaf community, that we can really, really benefit from. Um, you know, because there's just some stuff that's really fascinating, like, you know, since I got married, um, I've been in, you know, I've, I've socialised a lot more with the deaf, deaf, like, Muslim community in London, and, um, you know, I've learnt tons from it, really, like, I, I remember the f first time I, first time I kind of met, like, 25 deaf people at once, I'd only been married to my wife for, like, a week, and she was like, come to Shepherd's Bush after work, I was a primary school teacher then, she was like, come to Shepherd's Bush after work and we'll go to a Somali restaurant, and um, we went, and then there was like 25 <laughs> deaf people who turned up with her. I thought we were going to have like a romantic meal together, but but that she had other ideas. And um, that was like my first in encounter with like that many deaf people all using sign language. And, um, and it was fascinating. Like there's some, some things that I kind of, you know, I, I really learned from it and I have and I have benefited a lot from it and things I notice every time when we meet our deaf friends. And um, I just want to share some of them with you, inshallah. And I'll also give you guys some things to be aware of as and when you meet deaf people. Things like courtesies that you should know about and things in deaf culture that you should be aware of. Because even though like they use British Sign Language and the people are British if they're using British Sign Language for the most part, like there are specific deaf culture things as well. Um, before we carry on with this video, I'd like to start transcribing all the videos, putting like good quality subtitles in. But that obviously costs money and it takes a lot of time. So if you want to support that, please head over to my Patreon as well. I'll put a link to the Patreon in the description as well, just so I can dedicate more time to it and I can get help and stuff as well for us to make these videos accessible for deaf people too. Um, yeah, so please go ahead and do that. Even if you can only spare one dollar a month, it'll still go really far in Sharm and still make a big difference. So anyway, let's get into it. Just some things that I wanted to say, like. Firstly, you know, you, you imagine you can't hear, okay, like a lot of our conversations that we have are actually quite light and almost meaningless, like if you imagine you're sitting with your friend and you're just chatting and you're watching TV or whatever, you're not really even looking at each other, like you're not really even that present, but when you, when you sort of deaf people, you need to be present. Like you need to be present in that conversation and you need to be making eye contact with someone because you can't listen to someone or you can't pay attention to someone using sign language if you're not looking at them. Do you know what I mean? So it demands, it demands you to face them. Like, and it demands you to give them eye contact when you're, when you're listening to people, or you're observing people who are communicating with you in sign language. And even that's, you know, that's a revival of a, of a, of a sunnah, that's a revival of sunnah that our beloved messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would do that as part of his etiquette, that when he would listen to people, he would pay attention to them and he'd be present with them when they, when, when they were speaking to him. And we've lost that, you know, we've lost like a real deep, deeper connection with people who we're listening to and we're talking to. And, um, you know, that's something that, and that's in, enforced in the deaf community, right? Like they have to pay attention to be present with each other. And you know, I really love that. You know, it, it makes conversations a little bit more meaningful. Um, another thing is, um, you know, when, when we're talking to each other, often if you want to get someone's attention, you might like grab them, might like grab their arm. But you know, you imagine, you imagine if people are signing, okay, I'm signing. This means sign language, by the way, okay, I'm signing. And then someone grabs my arm to get my attention. It's literally like, Someone comes up to you and just putting their hand over your mouth. Like, you're just stopping them from speaking. Do you know what I mean? Like, that, that's something to be aware of, right? Like, if people are signing, you don't want to, um, you don't want to get their attention in a way that stops them communicating. If they're having a conversation, they're having a conversation over here, and you're grabbing their arm to try to get their attention, like, that's, that's really rude. Like, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the same as me just, you know, that's the same as me wanting someone's attention. As I say, just putting my hand over their mouth or putting my fingers in their mouth or something to stop them speaking. Like, it's it's so rude in that context, but you might not appreciate that if, you know, if you had a brother like Sam to give you that advice. Um, yeah, yeah, so something else that I noticed as well is, um, <laughs> like, obviously we can have volumes in our voice. Obviously, when, we're, when we speak to each other in a spoken language, we have volumes. So, but there is an equivalent to that in 
in the deaf community. There's an equivalent to that. And it's just making yourself bigger. You know, the, the implications of that are quite funny. Like, people shouting make bigger gestures. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I remember when we went to this restaurant, we were like, we wanted to like, book a table or something. And we're, my wife was trying to get the attention of like 25 people. But, but okay, picture this, right? You've got like 25 people all in like pairs, all chatting to each other in pairs. And then you've got one like, you know, not no, like, one like quite petite Somali woman trying to get all of their attention all at the same time. So my wife's trying to make herself as big as possible so to get to get all of their attention, which is the equivalent of shouting in a, in a deaf context. And um, yeah, so like making yourself big is the same. It is like is like the visual equivalent of being loud. And that's that's just a really interesting implication as well, because even how deaf couples have arguments as well may even mean that they would well, not, not even couples, just stuff it'll lie, you know, like there's me assuming that couples will have arguments. It's not good, is it? But but let's just say people have arguments, right? They'll make themselves bigger if they're shouting more or you, you can usually tell from their facial expression. So which kind of brings me on to my next point really, is that deaf people like, it's a huge, huge mistake that I see hearing people make. Hearing people often assume that because deaf people can't hear, that means that they're less in tune with the mood of conversations. Like, we quite often converse with um, having, having like, moods in our voice. Like, we can have, like, an angry-type voice, and we can have a, a happy voice, and a soft voice, and an aggressive voice. And we think that that doesn't... We think that deaf people won't pick up on that. But um, they are deaf people for the most part, are like ninjas. Like, you imagine, like, the slightest facial expression that you make or the slightest sort of rolling of your eyes, the slightest kind of, um, you know, upset look that you have in your face, that is literally their language. Like, like for you to kind of, like, frown at someone or, like, roll your eyes or, like, show on your face somehow that you're upset with someone, whilst in, like, a spoken environment, because we don't look at each other's faces much, because we can talk to each other... When we're not even like you, you can pick up the message of this video fine if I'm looking this way, but like so I assume that people won't people. I assume that like, what am I saying? Like in a spoken environment, rolling of your eyes and facial expressions is a more subtle way of communicating. But to deaf people, that is the that is like the clearest way you can possibly communicate. Like like my even though my wife's not deaf, my wife can communicate in English. She can lip read really well and stuff, but she's hard of hearing. But, like, because she's used to communicating with deaf people, I cannot get away with the slightest, like, aggressive look on my face or the slightest look of, like, you know, being frustrated or whatever, because it's literally her language. Like, that's literally, like, it's as clear as me telling you I'm annoyed with you. Like, to, to, a, to a deaf person, me doing that is literally the same as me just telling you I'm, I'm annoyed with you. <laughs> like, so that's, that's something that a lot of people don't pick up on a lot of people think for whatever reason that if there's a deaf person then they're just not they're not really as with it or something they're with it right like they're, they're ninjas in their own way yeah they've, they're, they're, they are super super finely tuned to pay attention to, to stuff like that you know so like you know b being deaf you know, oft, you know in a way like whilst it is a disability in a way it's also like a superpower in another way. Like I feel like, like my wife's deaf friends, they're so they're so like um, sort of socially intelligent. Like they, they know when I'm not really in the mood to do whatever, or they can tell when I'm a bit tired and stuff. That's another thing as well. Signing is exhausting. Like to, to, to sign, to communicate with people in sign is absolutely exhausting. It's like you're acting out. It's like you've you want to act out a whole evening. It's like you go to dinner with like your deaf friends and stuff, and so you're there for three hours. It's it's like you've it's like you've been dancing for three hours because you're moving constantly a whole whole evening, whole evening. You're saying yeah 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 yeah, inshallah we'll we'll do this and we'll be signing together and we'll we'll eat food in this restaurant or whatever. I'll be I'll be teaching you and blah blah blah. Like you're moving, paying attention constantly. It's I found it absolutely exhausting, but you build up your stamina, inshallah. When you practice a lot, like anything, you, know, you build up your stamina. Um, okay, and then something else I wanted to mention. Being deaf is not being helpless, right? Like, a lot of people don't appreciate. Um, if you're Deaf people can drive, by the way. Like, I think people assume that if you're deaf, then you can't do a lot of jobs or you can't um, function like, norm, like, 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 non, like, like hearing people. But actually, deaf people can do most stuff that you can do. Um, 
yeah, de deaf people. Um, you know, when we've got loads of friends who are deaf who, who drive and you know have a driving license and drive perfectly safely. You know, deaf people work as teachers and, and stuff as well. And um, even, even though we don't even though we don't listen to music, music's not permissible in Islam. Like, de like non-Muslim deaf people will even like music. Do you know what I mean? Like you can they can even like pick up on the vibrations and stuff of music and still appreciate stuff like that, which is which is amazing. Like absolutely amazing. Like you know, you have a whole sense that is either not working fully or doesn't work at all your hearing and 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 yet like deaf people can still pretty much do everything that we do which is really amazing but um you should still be making an effort for them yeah like there's a lot more deaf muslims out there than you realize and um you know we it, sh it should really be something that we all do you know i saw I saw this video on Facebook recently. Um, I'm just gonna pause the video for a second. I'm just gonna go and find what, what the name of this language is. And I'm, I'm just gonna be one sec, okay? Okay, so I found it. So there's a village, um, um, like, excuse my pronunciation for this, but, but basically, most people in this village, um, in the Balinese village um, of Benka Benkala, um, they speak a language, right? Well, they don't speak it, they sign, have a sign language that everybody knows. Even though, like, they have a very high percentage of people who are deaf. It's just part of their, part of their genetics that they have, um, that they have, like, a lot of deaf people in this village. But everybody knows sign language, right? So, like, um, I can't remember the point that I was making. Um, oh, um, yeah, so basically, like, how, how inclusive it is. Yeah, like, if everybody was to learn sign language, like, I think that, I think that in our Muslim schools and stuff, it should be like mainstream. Do you know what I mean? We, we already have support for it. Like there's there's a brother who I know, um, who I met at university um, called Amin. And um, he's, I think, co-founder of a company called Amin and Yasmin. And they do like Brit like Islamic British sign language materials and stuff. I'll, I'll link them up. I'll link up their website in the description, Charlotte. You can also find them on Instagram. But um, yeah, like they, they already have resources and stuff. So we could make that just implemented across the whole country. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it should be something that, that we're teaching our children just to communicate at a basic level. Because with a very little effort, you can get a lot out. You know, like I, like I noticed when I was first learning sign language, in an evening I could learn 150 signs. Because a lot of them correspond to English words we know anyway. A lot of them are, like, culturally entwined with things that we would expect. Like, I don't think it would take you long to know that, you know, to, to, to learn that... Um, I don't know, food is like that or something, or it wouldn't take you, because a lot of them are kind of intuitive anyway. Um, you know, a lot of them, you know, as I say, are intuitive, but, so you pick them up quickly, you know, something that we could do very, very quickly, and it would help, it would help a lot, a lot of deaf Muslims, or deaf, deaf people generally, sorry. So, um, you know, that's something we need to raise awareness for, but, um, you know, before we go, make sure that you head over to my LinkedIn, um, a lot of you maybe don't even know that I'm even on LinkedIn. Never talked about it on the channel before. Go over to LinkedIn. That's where I publish my my, my articles. I'm trying to do them every Monday. I'm trying to do a blog post every Monday, and um, yeah, the, the, those articles are out every Monday. Inshallah, I'm talking about general language type stuff. It's not specifically Somali, specifically Arabic at the moment. Um, you know, so so over there on the LinkedIn. Also, I'm trying to get it up on the website as well, soundofsomalia.com forward slash blog i'm trying to get that working at the moment so you can go and check that out as well if you want to actually look at it on my website but um that's everything for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you for joining me and i really look forward to seeing you guys in the next video take it easy assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu